Welcome back to This Takes the Cake. Uh, we are super excited. We have Elizabeth um, from Wedding Dance Coach, and we have a lot in common already. So we Me both too. started in 2010. My middle name's Elizabeth. You're from Denver of the West, and I'm from Denver of the East. Oh That's crazy. my gosh. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Um, so well, we're, I know that you spoke in Vegas. Did you speak this past year? In no, Vegas? this year is my first year speaking at Wedding MBA and I'm so excited. I cannot love be more it. thrilled. Awesome. That's really exciting. Um, have you been to a Wedding MBA though before? Oh my gosh, girl. I went Back in the day in 2012, when I was like a baby entrepreneur in the wedding industry, and I was still like, okay, what is happening right now? Right. Um, and I loved it. I, I got so much out of it. I like my notebook was just filled and I totally enjoyed the experience. So I'm super right. excited to come now as like a 14 year wedding industry pro and like have a totally different lens. And I cannot wait to like connect with my people again. It'll right. be so fun. No, that's awesome. And congrats on that. That's, a, I mean, that's a really big honor and a big deal. And um, it's so crazy. Like, just like you said, I went to another uh, Vegas platform back when I started. And then, you know, 12, later, 12 years later, I'm speaking. And I never thought in a million years, I was the one sitting here listening to everyone. And I'm like, wait, now I'm telling these people how to do something. <laughs> so I had the same exact thought. Like, and right? I was just, how motivating is that for anyone listening? Yeah. Who's like, I don't even know if that could ever be me. Yes, it could. It totally it could. could. That's so cool. I love hearing that. No, absolutely. So you started out as a professional dancer, correct? Yes. I'm that's jealous correct. Of that. I never, I was into dance, but I was never like, I did clogging. I don't even know if they have that out there. Have you ever yeah, heard of clogging? absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I never did clogging, but I knew people who did and that's challenging. It's awesome though. All right. All right. So tell us a little bit, obviously, how did you get started in the wedding industry and just a little bit about you before we get going? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you having me on your show. I'm so excited to speak with you and, and talk to your audience. I'm, I'm honored. Um, so yeah, I got started in the wedding industry totally like it was it was so unplanned. Okay. So I had danced professionally. I went to I grew up dancing, did all, you know, the dance competition circuit, traveled for dance. And then I went to college in New York City, got my degree in dance. I got an awesome gig dancing on a cruise ship for Holland America, oh, which if fun. you're a dancer that is like such a great gig because you get great pay and you're in these incredible like multi-million dollar shows and Bob Mackie who designs all of Cher's costumes mm. like did all of our costumes and so it was a total oh, dream crazy. come true for for baby Elizabeth in her 20s and <laughs> um, then I moved to Chicago and started to I was still dancing I got to travel to Japan and perform for the troops out there and absolutely love being on stage. And then I really transitioned into like teaching and choreography. Okay. And that's right. where I just like fell in love with sharing the passion of dance with other people. And what was really unique is that I was the teacher at the dance studio that if an adult came in, cause you know, most dance studios are for kids. So adults would come in and be like, we we're, we're going to this party and we're just like so awkward on the dance floor. Like it's embarrassing. So who can like work with us? And I was like the only teacher who was like, I'll do it. Like, I love this. Like I love working with adults. And so, you know, in my entrepreneurial brain, I was like, how can I create a business where I can work exclusively with adults? Fast forward, I'm engaged. You know, my husband and I are planning our wedding and everyone knows that I'm a former professional dancer, but my husband is not a dancer. Okay. Like that is not he his thing. Feet. <laughs> He's got two left feet. He needs a lot of liquid courage. Like this is just not his jam. Okay. He's like, that is you. And right. so I told everyone, I'm like, we're not doing like anything for our first dance. Like, you know, he doesn't dance. Like we're just going to like wing it. Like we have so much going on. And we totally tricked everybody. It was so fun. Yeah, so we did, a surprise. we did a surprise and this is back in 2010. Okay. So this is like, OG when, when YouTube was starting to blow up with these dances right. and all that. TikTok and wasn't a thing. <laughs> what's that? You said TikTok wasn't a thing then. 
No. Yeah, exactly. There was no TikTok. There was none of that. Um, and so we started out with a slow dance where we didn't really do much. I didn't choreograph it at all. And then it was like record scratch and we did a dance through the decades. And what was so fun is that my husband and I were square dance partners in elementary school together. And so wow. we incorporated square dancing, which is so embarrassing it. into our first dance, but it was kind of our way of like telling our, our love story. And, um, so cool. we weren't together since elementary school, by the way, that'd be really yeah. weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be but, like elementary school sweethearts. <laughs> yeah, that would be like, oh, girl, you got to get out. You got to, you got to go explore. No, we, yeah, we reconnected in our late twenties. And anyways, our first dance, we did, we started out slow. We did a dance to the decades, and everyone was just floored to see my husband like rocking out, jamming, and it completely transformed the whole energy of our reception. And it elevated the dance party. And as a former professional dancer, I just wanted the dance floor packed. Like I wanted it to be the most fun party ever. And so right. that dance just completely transformed it. And that's when I had my aha moment for starting my business was that like, Wait, if I can do this. Well, I was realizing that if I went to a ballroom studio and said, hey, choreograph this for me, they wouldn't be able to do it because we incorporated so many different styles like hip hop. And it wasn't just traditional ballroom. And so that's when I realized I wanted to start Wedding Dance Coach and bring in all my knowledge of ballroom and hip hop and contemporary and just break all the rules and create these really unique dances for couples to help them feel really confident. Because I was nervous for my first dance. I was like, if I'm nervous, how do people who like don't dance do this? Yeah. Like, you know? Right. So that's how Wedding Dance Coach was, was born in 2010. And that's how I made my way into the wedding industry. No, that's awesome. Okay, so walk us through like the process of choreographing and teaching a couple of dance. Like, how does that whole process work? Do they come with yeah. you with ideas or do you give them ideas? Great question. So I have an incredible team of instructors that work for me now. So I actually am not in the studio um, crafting the dances anymore, but I've trained my staff on exactly what to do. So I can kind of give you, pull, pull the cool. curtain back and kind of teach you our process. So essentially, when a couple comes to us, most of the times they're just like, we are awkward. We have two left feet and like, we just want the most basic dance ever. You know, like right. most people are not like, we want, you know, extensive choreography. You know, they just want something simple and impressive and fun. And so what happens is they, they tell us their song and the instructor will start diving in within the first lesson. So most of our couples do like five to 10 private lessons with us. Okay. And cool. we will start to like right away from the first song, start to customize their dance. So what that could look like is teaching them, you know, a simple entrance onto the dance floor. There's so many fun entrances that you can do besides just like starting awkwardly, like, okay, we're ready. You know, we're like, you play the song. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like it's such a big moment, right? And so, um, so we do their entrance, we'll give them like a basic step. So that could be like a sway that just doesn't look awkward, or it could be like a box step or a, just something that's like really easy, but just they're, they're moving a little bit more as a unit. And then right. we do turns and spins and lifts and dips. We've been doing so many lifts with our couples these days. It is so fun. Like you would be amazed at that's how fun. many people have zero dance experience and we oh. can teach them the most incredible lift and they look like pros and they're and the guests are just like floored it's it's my favorite when we see when we hear the the videos and people are like ah you know oh. it's so fun so yeah we we give them a pattern from beginning to end and of course we rehearse it a lot so they're just like they could do it in their sleep and that's part of what's so fun is that you just feel so relaxed and confident because you know exactly what you're going to do. You know, it's going to be impressive for your guests right. to watch. It's going to be so fun to perform and the journey of taking dance lessons with your partner when you're wedding planning. I mean, of course you of all people know that wedding planning can be really stressful. And so dance lessons right. just bring in like that fun element of like connecting with your partner and having fun and learning something new and we try to keep it really simple and easy, but impressive. So that's kind of our right. whole motto, simple yet impressive. And that's definitely one of my favorite parts of a wedding is when they've actually done a choreographed dance. And cause you, I mean, even as a planner, it's exciting because we don't really know exactly 
you know, what's going to happen or whatever. And I've had couples that want to practice before, you know, we transition everybody into the, the ballroom or the tent. So in regards to music, is that something you provide for them as well? Like, do you? So they have to pick out their song in advance of their lessons, but we absolutely can guide them if they're, if they're feeling really stressed. So what I like to tell people, so there's two things. Okay. I won't, we won't help you if you're like, just pick a song for us. It's like, no, 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 this is your wedding day. Like there are thousands of songs. Like I can't just pick a song for you, but what we can do is if you can narrow it down to your top, like two or three songs, we right. can totally tell you like what would be the easiest to dance to or this is what this style would be like or this would this would be more like this vibe does that make right. sense so we can kind yeah. of coach them into that um and i always like to share with couples like if you're having trouble picking your song which i remember i struggled with that so much because i love so many different types of music is two things one you can always ask yourself like do i want it to be old school vibes you know like Etta James, Frank Sinatra, like timeless classic songs, or do I want a more like modern hit, right? So you can kind of think that's a great place to start in terms of just think of the vibe, you know, think of your dance as another way of telling your love story. So one of our clients right now, she, they've been together for two years. They're getting married, really small, intimate wedding. And she's like, Elizabeth, we have such a fun dynamic in our relationship and we want to showcase that in our dance. So what they're doing is they're doing kind of the traditional romantic, you know, um, dance for about a minute and a half. And then they're going to do record scratch and then bust out into Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars to just show their playful side. So you don't have to just pick one song. You can totally do a mashup of songs. Yeah, I love that. But if you're going to do a mashup, please keep it to under three and a half minutes. I was talking to a mother of the groom the other day and she was like, Elizabeth, I want to do a 15 minute mashup. And I was like, sister, we are not doing that. That would be way too long. So three and a half minutes is, is the sweet spot. Right? No, that's cool. Okay. So what would you say is like the most popular first dance song or what's the one that everybody's like, Oh, and then you're like, yep. Same one. (laughs) Well, okay. So a few it's, it's, a few years ago, it was Perfect by Ed Sheeran. Oh, yeah. Like, I heard that song like, <laughs> yeah. at least a thousand times, I think. We um, even had that- him sing at a first dance song. He What's actually that? Came, he came and sang that song at one of our weddings back no. in 2014. Yeah. That's when no. it was popular. Yeah, 14 or 15. Yeah, I think it was 14. Yeah. That is so <laughs> epic. Oh my yeah. gosh. That is so epic. And do you yeah. remember his the music video he did where he danced with like a professional dancer? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So we would have couples come in and be like, we want to learn that. And I was like, so have you danced professionally? <laughs> yeah, good luck. No, I'm kidding. Do you have a year so, for train? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, that was a very popular song. And then um, there was a Ray LaMontagne song, um, and I'm blanking on the name of it. What's the Frank Sinatra oh. song, too, that Ray picks? Um, that one? That one we we haven't seen is we haven't had a lot of Frank Sinatra songs lately. Maybe that's um, a southern thing. <laughs> yeah, that could be. I mean, so. that last yeah. by Edna James is still like yeah, if you look really at like funny. the trending charts of like first dances, Edna James is the at last is always like in the top five. Right. So we definitely see that because it's it's just classic. It is. Yeah. No, it's a good one. Okay. What about mm-hmm. um, coaching and? dance lessons for either parents or bridal party. Is that a thing? We totally do that. And it's so special. It is so special. Um, yeah. So even, you know, parents, they want to, they're in the spotlight, you know, all eyes are on them. They want to feel confident, you know, they, they want to shine and they, so we absolutely customize parent child dances. Um, and, that can also range in style. We've done some surprise dances for parents. We've done right. surprise like, you know, mother son dance where they're dancing slow and then they like bust out and they put on their sunglasses and they start like doing a disco or something. So I always tell people like, you know, it's another way to kind of showcase your relationship with, with your parents. Right. And 
Um, yeah, so those are those are really special. The father daughter ones just always make me cry. Like even those if I'm best. just coming into the studio to drop something off and I see a father daughter, I will just start crying like within the, a minute of them dancing, and I'm like, gosh, I am a ham. Like I, yeah, I don't know. I just I get very emotional when I see father daughter dances. Right. So at your studio, is it just for coaching and, and lessons for weddings or other things as well? Absolutely. So we were the OG. So it's really funny right. because on Instagram now you see all these like, you know, spinoffs of like, you know, dance uh, people who specialize in wedding dance. But back in 2010, we were the OG of having a business and having a studio that was 100% focused on weddings. And right. what I love about that is we know every single detail that you're not thinking about, right? Like how is your dress going to impact your movement? Bring your shoes to the studio so you can practice in them. And that literally gives you more confidence because you're breaking them in. I don't know about you, but like at my wedding, it was like the heel was rubbing on the back of my heel and I was like bleeding. And I was like, shoot, I should have like practiced in these shoes ahead of time. So we try to really, you know, um, get in front of all those things. And so we are like the wedding dance experts and that is a hundred percent what we focus on. And what's really fun is in our studio, we have these practice skirts. If you go on our Instagram, you'll see our brides like in our practice skirts. Okay. And so check those out. Yeah. And it's really fun. Like you, I mean, you can get these practice skirts. We have a link on our um, Instagram where you can get them like super affordable from Amazon but it, that also just adds another layer. Like if you have like a big ball gown and you're rehearsing your dance and yoga, you know, sweatpants every it's day, so yeah, it's so different. So we just try to like think through every detail, like how you're going to communicate with your vendors, your planner, they need to know what you're doing. Like you'd be amazed at how many times they're like, oh, we should tell them that. I'm like, yes, you have to tell your DJ where you're entering, you know, entering the dance floor and all of that. So Yes, we exclusively focus on weddings. That is our jam. That is our full-time focus. And we are obsessed with it. It's so fun. That's awesome. So do you offer virtual lessons as well or just in studio? Yeah. So originally for the first 11 years of my business, it was all local, you know, Denver couples in studio. We have a gorgeous studio space in Denver, Colorado. Um, But when we blew up three years ago, when we blew up on Instagram and TikTok, We have over 55,000 followers on Instagram, almost 40,000 on TikTok. And when that happened, I was getting all these DMs of people who were in other countries or other states who said, oh my gosh, there's nothing like this near us. Like, can we work with you? And so practically overnight, I launched a virtual studio, which was so fun. So we now have worked with couples in the UK, Australia, Canada, and all over the US. And it's so fun because my my virtual lesson instructor, she actually lives in Florida. She, thanks to the pandemic, she mastered the art of teaching couples dance online, which none of us would have thought that was a thing, but she is so good at it. You would be amazed. I I actually just posted a video, video on our website yesterday of one of our virtual couples. And if you watch it, you would just be like, wow, how did they learn this on zoom? Like, that's amazing. So So yeah, you use a concept like a zoom or something. Say that again. I said, is it like a Zoom that they do when they do the virtual? Yes, we use Zoom. Screens? Yeah, we okay. just keep it simple with Zoom because everyone knows how to use it. And we have our kind of tips and tricks on how to best utilize that for a private lesson. Right. No, that's awesome. Okay, what's the most unique request you've ever gotten for a dance? I know oh there's God. at least one. Oh, my gosh. Or well, strangest or coolest. <laughs> Well, I was going to say the the woman who told me that she wanted to do a, a mix of, you know, a 15 minute mix of songs. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is so bad. It's a workout. Um, she, I was like, girlfriend, <laughs> like, believe me when I say when you're dancing for three minutes, you're going to be, you're, you're gonna done. Be done. You know, that's a yeah. lot of choreography to learn. Um, well, this, this kind of also ties into like the, this takes the cake, uh, <laughs> Story. So I might be like answering both your questions, but when I was kind of thinking about like what is a funny story, one of my favorite ones is I had this couple come in, they were lovely, and she pulls out these heels, and I swear to God, they're like six inches or something. 
Were they like stripper like, shoes? <laughs> they were totally like stripper shoes. Okay, like platform. I, I think they were red. Yeah. I mean, I, I swear to God, it was like it was like go girl. Like you work it, you better work. But here's the problem. Okay, now <laughs> this is a note for everybody. If you're gonna wear heels, she puts them on, and I swear it was like hard for her to just like walk in them. Yeah. And I was just thinking, okay, if we're having trouble walking, dancing oh, in them, it's gonna be real move. tough. <laughs> So, but then it gets better. So then they give me their music. I put it on and this was quite a few years ago. Um, but, and it was like a death metal song. It was like, ah, and I'm not even kidding you. And I was just like, mm-hmm. yep. We're yeah. It's just it's totally fine. Challenge. Like <laughs> we are going to do this. And so, I mean, I kind of didn't like, I can quirk off this any person? song. This was in person. person. Yeah, this was in person quite a few years ago. But um, they're just one of those couples where I was just like, wow, this is so unique. (laughs) Um, And they were sweet. They were lovely. But I was just like, wow. So it was basically like them walking out. And it's like, "Ah." and I did the best I could with it. I really did. We always do the best we could. Did she wear the same shoes on the wedding day? Yes. (laughs) We, We practiced a lot in those shoes. There was a lot of coaching in terms of how to, how to, you know, where to keep your weight. You know, when you're wearing high heels, you want to keep your weight more in the balls of your feet versus your actual yeah. heel, which you naturally do, right? Because if you think about your heels, you're kind of on your tiptoes. So your, your body weight is more over the ball of your foot. But when you're dancing, you really want to make sure that like your whole center of gravity is over the ball of your foot. And that'll help you to have more control over your, over your movement. Right. Because that is the worst when I see a, a female walking in high heels and they, you can clearly tell they don't know how to walk in them. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm like, maybe that's another revenue stream for us. We just, we should do master classes on how to walk in heels. Yeah. And they, they should have that in school. I mean, I did pageants back in the day. So I had like pageant coaching and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's definitely a, a thing that not everybody knows how to do. So totally. <laughs> well, and I don't, photos, you know, I don't know about you and your couples, but a lot of our couples I've noticed recently, a lot of brides are choosing to change out of their heels for their dance. Some of them dance in their bare feet. Some of them put on a fun pair of sneakers. And I kind of love that trend of just like, they're just like, okay, forget this. Like, this is ridiculous. I'm going to be comfy for, you know, even just for the dance. I think that that's kind of fun. I agree. I'd probably say half of our couples put on some type of platform uh shoe some type of tennis shoe to be more comfy cool. at least they still get that height you know but then they're in a, a flat shoe so that's a good yeah. idea i didn't even think about that that's out good. there yeah steve madden's got some really cute all white ones bedazzled yeah so oh thanks yeah. for the hot tip we'll have to share that with our people of course okay so how far in advance should they get with you to to learn a dance because a lot of times our yeah. client, I mean, it's like pulling teeth to try to get their first dance song. Last weekend, I had a client, they didn't pick their first, I mean, they weren't obviously choreographing a, a dance to it, but they picked their song the night before for the DJ. <laughs> mm, <laughs> totally. So I see this all the time in with our clients and in, in the industry. And it, it a lot of couples wait till the very last minute and it kind of breaks my heart because I can't tell you how many times we'll get phone calls and they're like, we're getting married in 10 days and we're, and we just realized that we, we don't know what we're doing for our first dance and we're so nervous. And da, da, da. so like part of what I've been trying to do in the last few years is like educating the planners on like, this is when you should tell your clients to book their lessons. So to answer that question, they should totally start their dance lessons three to four months before their wedding date. Okay. ideally okay like yes we can work last minute miracles with <laughs> with couples we do it all the time and i really do honor that when you're planning a wedding i understand there's so many other details that take priority of course i totally get that and if it's if that's a part of your wedding that you really value that and you just maybe like you're just really nervous like you would be amazed at how much more comfortable and like relaxed you'll feel on your wedding day. When you just take a few lessons, you'll just be like, okay, like we can do this. And, but yeah, starting three to four months. So that can mean reaching out to us like six months before your wedding day and just saying like, here's our vision, here's this, but three to four months is like the sweet spot where we like to start working with people. 
Okay. Very cool. Um, yeah. I would say most people probably are more last minute though, right? Or would you say yes? It's well, there's always like a sect of people that are super last minute. We got planners. Yeah, of course. Yeah. There yeah. I mean, most of our clients do book like three months before the wedding. And Perfect. we liked we like that because you know, and there's like the other side of the spectrum, which is, you know, people will reach out to us and say like, we're getting married in a year. And so there, it's kind of a tricky thing. Cause of course, like learning to dance is a skill and you could spend a lot of time learning it. You know, it all depends on your goal and your vision, but in terms of your actual choreography for your first dance, we like it three to four months before your wedding because of a few reasons. One, you just want the movement to be fresh in your mind and body. So that way, yeah. like you walked into your wedding day and you're just like, bam, I'm nailing this. Right. And as we all know, in those final three to four months, we also have so many other events going on, like bachelorette parties and, you know, bridal fittings and all these things. And so let's say you get sick or something. I like to have a little bit of spaciousness between lessons. So that way you're not like, oh my gosh, we're running out of time. So that That's three funny. to four months is kind of perfect to fit in five to 10 lessons and still have some spaciousness and, and time to practice in between lessons. Like our couples, we always provide them a video at the end of every lesson. Oh, cool. So whether you're in Denver or like virtually you get a video of your dance. So that way you can practice it at home. And a lot of our couples tell us that's like their favorite part, like they have so many happy memories of wedding planning where they were like at home and they had a glass of wine and they were trying to dance in their living room and their dog was like jumping up on them. And so it's really fun. It's like a, such a fun way to connect with your partner. And, um, but yeah, that three to four months mark is, is really the sweet spot. If, if you can, if you can hit it, if you can't, we can, we do work last minute miracles. We've done like, I I'll never forget. There was a couple that reached out to us and I think they had two weeks till their wedding and they wanted to do our 10 pack, our wow worthy total dance package, which normally people would do, you know, over the course of four months. Yeah. And yeah. we totally did it. We did a couple like two hour lessons in a day. Like we had one day where we did like a two hour lesson and then we just, and they were amazing and they rocked it. So that's awesome. It's, it's not ideal, but you know, we tried to be flexible with people because we understand they're trying to juggle a lot. Right. No, that's awesome. So with like a 10, a 10 package, is that one hour per each rehearsal or training? So our lessons are 55 minutes just to kind of like allow a little transition time between clients. But um, yeah, so it's 10, 55 minute lessons. And like I said, sometimes depending on, cause some of our clients drive in from the mountains or they're in from out of state or, you know, that type of thing. We will do two hour lessons, meaning like essentially two lessons back to back. Right. And that can be a really great way to like get a lot of momentum and like, you know, really do a lot. And then of course we do a video and they have that to go home and practice with. But yeah, it's 10, 55 minute lessons. Okay. And so the last, I mean, I just am thinking back when I was in dance, we had dance every Thursday, you know, and then we'd practice through the week and then on Thursday we would show up. So do you, is the last lesson like the week prior? I love that question. Yes. Okay. We always coach people. We always, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Because you want to have like a final rehearsal as right. close to your wedding day as possible. So that's what okay. I always tell people is like your 10th lesson or your fifth lesson, whatever is your last lesson. We want it as close to the wedding as possible. So ideally like that week or the week before, but where it's like, it's your last like dress rehearsal, right? Like we're going to run through this over and over. You're going to walk out and you're going to feel so confident. Like we've got this, we can do this in our sleep. Like we cannot wait to perform this for our guests. We're so excited, but yeah, right. you do want to kind of get it booked as close to your wedding as possible. That last one. Right. No, that's cool. And that's really cool. You send a video so they could even have it on their phone just to a little refresher before the actual first dance, which is super cool. Yes. The video is such a, a fabulous a memory changer. tool. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. And it helps alleviate like during the process of learning your dance, it helps to alleviate some drama, you know, like if you go home and your partner's like, no, we turned this way. And then she's like, no, it was this way. And it's like, let's just watch the video. And then, oh, okay. Yeah, you were right. 
So, so obviously, I mean, a lot of people that come in to learn first dance, I mean, obviously some probably took dance when they were younger and stuff like that, but obviously some don't have any dance background. Do you still do the five, six, seven, eight counts? One, two, or no? Okay. So I'm just curious. Two, parts, <laughs> two answers for that. One is 99% of the couples that we work with have no prior dance experience. Okay. All right. There's so that answer. most of them, okay. or like maybe they, one of them grew up as like a cheerleader or something or a dancer, but like they didn't like when I say no dance experience, I mean like no couples dance experience. Okay. Right? So okay. most people are total beginners. And that's where I always tell sure. people like, it's totally okay. If you have two left feet, you have no rhythm. Like there has literally never been like one person that we, that came in our studio that we were like, we can't help you. <laughs> you know, like it's amazing. After that first lesson, it's my favorite to see the couple's faces. Cause they, everyone walks in really nervous, you know, cause it's like stepping out of your comfort zone and doing something that you're just like, you, you might feel self-conscious about. So our, our whole vibe of our studio is like, how can we make our clients feel so safe and comfortable to learn something new and step out of their comfort zone and not be afraid to make mistakes. And like, let's just take the pressure down, you know, like, let's just have some fun. You know, that's the best part about performing at a wedding is like, it's not a dance competition. Like no one is going to give you no the mirror ball trophy. You, yeah. No one knows if you mess up because they're the only two that know the dance, you know? Exactly. So. Exactly. So you just keep smiling. You keep going no matter what. So the second piece is we don't typically focus a lot on counts, like five, six, seven, eight. We try to make it because that for people who are not dancers, that can feel really stressful. Okay. And so everyone learns so differently. So we do try to incorporate lots of different ways of teaching. So like visual cues, you know, like, you know, for example, teaching a box step, you know, having them imagine a, a, a square on the floor and they're tracing that with, with their foot. So things like that, depending on how people learn, but typically what we do is the choreography is, is very much focused on the musical cues. So that way they're not, we don't want anyone at their wedding day to be like five, six, seven, eight. We don't want them to be counting and like stressed about that. I would much right. rather them be like tuned in and plugged into the sound of their music. And that won't change, especially if you have a DJ. If you have a band, we have some different suggestions, but essentially, so it would be like, you know, here's the intro, the intro of the music. And then when they say, waterfall you're gonna turn to the right and then so a lot of times we'll hook the movement into the musical cues okay and that's cool. a little bit easier for people to remember we also kind of give them some spaciousness where we might tell them like okay you're gonna do this step four times so we might do that um but typically we don't we don't spend too much time like harping on like perfect rhythm or counts or anything like that we just try to keep it really simple and then what about like facial expressions? Because sometimes people get caught up in the moment and they're like thinking, I'm like, oh, look at your face. I know. I, <laughs> this is one of those things. Or, or, okay. Uh, what I always tell our couples is like, what you do in here on your face is what you're going to do on your wedding day. Because, you know, people have that illusion of like, well, on my wedding day, like I'll smile. And I'm like, you won't. You won't, you'll like, you have to practice smiling right now. Like, I know this is really right. awkward, you know? So our, yeah, all of my instructors are trained to give feedback on people's faces. I mean, and in a nice help way, because people just don't know, you know, like, you know, they don't know. So and we, of what to do next, you know? So, yeah, we laugh about it. Like, we'll be like, okay, your face looks really serious. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, are you having fun? Cause you look very stressed out, you know? And, um, and yeah, of course when you, but with that being said, like, of course, when you're first learning a step or you're first practicing, practicing a step in your first couple lessons, we're not going to say anything. Cause of, yeah, course, of your, course your brain is still like learning the move. So of course you're like focusing or you're doing like a weird thing with your face, but then as you're kind of rehearsing, then we will start to say, okay, now like let's let's smile. Let's, you know, so it gets in your muscle memory. Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about you. So did you ever think your dance background was going to lead you to the wedding world? 
No, no, not at all. I like originally I wanted to be like a Broadway star or something, you know, like I wasn't like, oh, I want to go be in the wedding industry. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so I did not, I did not see that coming. Right. No, absolutely. All right. What is your favorite part about being in the wedding industry? Hmm. My favorite part about being in the wedding industry is this is, okay, so I just celebrated my 14-year wedding anniversary with my husband last week. Congrats. And because I am, you know, a decade out from from that, my wedding day, it's, the thing I love about being in the industry is like knowing that you are part of a couple's like snapshot of their life in this, this chapter that they're going to cherish forever. And even though our part is like such a small part, it's a really big part because it's a part that there's so much anxiety for couples. There's so much stress leading up to their wedding day. And we're able to help them like reconnect with each other, gain confidence, feel good in their bodies, actually feel excited about, you know, being in the spotlight. And so just making an impact on couples and, and that is like my absolute favorite is just seeing that transformation of, I'm really nervous. I'm really stressed. We have so much going on. And then they walk out of the studio and it's like, they're a different, they're different people. They're like connected. They're laughing. They're having fun. They're remembering their why. And just knowing that this is such an intense time of life. And that we get to be a part of that and a part of their story, that is totally my favorite part of the industry. Yeah, no, I definitely agree to that because, I mean, you've been in the industry just as long as I have. And, like, I'll see people and I'm like, gosh, they look familiar. I can't remember who they are. But they're like, oh, my God. And they remember everything, you know, because it's such a special moment in time. And, I mean, the first dance is, I mean, super important. <laughs> so, yeah, the first kiss yeah. for, for, for the photographer and first dance for the photographer and videographer is uh, super important. So that's cool. It is. Um, okay. What would you say is a first dance challenge that people might not realize? Like when they come to you to, to learn, what would be like a challenge? Yeah. Um, I think a couple things. They have One, to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they are going to have to practice if they want to really like rock it out. Um, I think another challenge sometimes is the dress. So if they like, we've had couple or we've had brides come in and they're like, oh, I have this like train and I'm, and I'm asking, okay, well, are you going to like bustle it up for the dance? Like, are you going to, they're like, what's the bustle? And I'm like, oh my God. There is a lot of clients that'll be like, what do you mean? What's a bustle? And I'm like, they don't know. They've never heard that word, which I was mind blown, but yeah. Okay. That makes me feel better. I'm like, wait, what's happening right now? Um, another thing that has happened is like a bride will pick a dress that like her, where it like it's tight on her arms. And she literally, like, if you think about a turn, you have to lift your arm up. Right. So she's like, I can't lift my, I can't lift my hand like above my head. So then we have to get really creative as to how to, so I would just say, if you're doing dance lessons, just be mindful of your dress, share with your instructor, like what your dress looks like and be mindful of if you have any limitations, like if the dress is dragging on the floor, you don't want to do like a traveling, you know, step where you're walking backwards because you're going to step on your dress and trip. Right. So it's really like we, we can make anything work, but we need the information. And I think sometimes that's a mistake that couples make is they are not fully communicating what's happening. And so for us to create like the best possible outcome for you, you have to like communicate with us about your dress and, and in your fitting, like, you know, if you go to a dress fitting, you can kind of play with it, right? Like you can lift your arms up, you can turn around, you can put on your shoes and try to walk, or you can try to move backwards. And, and if you have any mobility issues, that's really important for us to know. No, that's a really great point. Cause I've even had brides that like, once they put their dress on, they can't even sit down, <laughs> you know? So like, you oh know, just thinking about, you know, movement and things like that, you know, that is a, a really good point. No, I, I definitely agree to that. Okay, cool. Um, okay. How many first dances do you think you've choreographed in your My career? company has <laughs> choreographed thousands of first dances. That's awesome. Okay. That's mm-hmm. cool. Very cool. Yes. That's, that's a lot. 
<laughs> there's a lot there's a, there i mean 14 years when i first started the company of course i did everything myself which i'm sure if if you're an, a business owner or entrepreneur you totally get it it's like you wear all the hats you teach all the lessons you do all the marketing all the sales you do everything so i would teach you know eight hours a day on like a saturday and sunday and like lessons back to back to back and when i got pregnant with my first child i realized like i can't do this by myself anymore and that's when i hired my first instructor and then the rest is history right like now i have a team of employees and i have a studio manager and they're all incredible they're all incredible artists in their own right they all have their own they get to be really creative with our couples like we have structures that we teach them but like ultimately they get to be creative with the couples because what really sets our company apart is we don't put you in a ballroom box like if you if your song let's say is a waltz right we're not gonna say okay now we have to teach you the waltz and the rise and the fall and the technique and this for us it, like maybe we'd be like okay it's a waltz like we're gonna do this this little waltz step but then we might like bust out into like a contemporary move or like there's no rules that they have to follow they get it's all about making the couple look good feel good you know like showcase their love story and so they get to be their own creative artists and so yeah because because i have such an awesome team i mean each of them every season we work with hundreds of couples so it, it adds up really quickly so i wish i knew the exact number i should i should like go back and do the math but um right. definitely thousands so how many instructors do you have are they currently I have four and I'm looking to hire two more for this wedding season. Perfect. So shout outs to anybody that's uh, wanting to teach first dances. <laughs> so, yep. Yep. That's awesome. We're, we have two job openings in Denver for our Denver studio. So you would have to be local. Our virtual studio, we're, we're good right now, but yeah, that's cool. come to our website, apply. We'd love to, we'd love to hear from you. That's awesome. So did they have to dance to show you <laughs> or how does that work? <laughs> That's a great question. Well, when you interview someone who's a dance instructor and you, you know, get an idea of their background, their teaching experience, their choreography, you don't typically need to see that. Like we do ask, do you have video examples of you dancing or, but like, you know, if you, if you dance on a cruise ship, like I know you're a great dancer, right? So like things like that, but we do have a whole like onboarding for our teachers where we train them because we want to ensure because it is different like what we teach wedding couples is different than maybe what they learned in like the social dance world and like i said we break a lot of rules which if you're like a ballroom dancer you might be like well elizabeth that's wrong like that's and that's not the right technique i'm like we don't care about that we just want them to look awesome right like awesome sauce so you can let go of those details because we're seeing these people you know five to ten times like we need to focus on what's most important for them and that detail of like the count or the, you know, perfect angle. Like we let go of perfectionism in our studio and we just want our couples to shine. So that's, that can be a learning curve for some of our teachers sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about your Instagram coaching. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Let's talk about that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, when I, when wedding dance coach, when my company blew up on Instagram and TikTok, I had really, ev- so prior to that, I had focused all of our marketing efforts on SEO, word of mouth, referral, you know, all the typical ways, which was fantastic. We had, we didn't have a lead generation problem. We had lots of couples coming in every year, but I, I saw the power of social media and I was like, how can I harness that as like, because it, it doesn't cost money. Obviously it costs your time and energy. Of but, um, so I spent a year really like mastering the art of short form video. So reels and TikToks, and studying it, like really studying social media marketing. And so when we blew up and we really went all in on our social media marketing efforts, our results were insane. Not only did we grow the, like my entire brand's following to over 120,000 combined account followers, which is really cool, but we got over 4,000 hot prospects on our email list. So these were all couples who are engaged and getting married in the next 12 months. So our ideal clients, and we had a boost in revenue by 84%. So it was insane. And all of a sudden I was like, okay, I'm hooked. This is incredible. I also have done it for my personal brand with my Instagram marketing brand where I've, 
I've made incredible connections and I now work privately with other owners, other entrepreneurs and people who are wanting to leverage Instagram in their organic, meaning like no paid ads paid marketing ads, yeah. strategy, because it is like the most powerful tool in the palm of our hand. You can reach your dreamboat ideal couple and it is, it's my favorite. So that's, that's what I do now with my Instagram marketing um, coaching brand. And I have a podcast too, where I, uh, where I teach all I about it. how to do that. It's called strut it. It's so fun. So <laughs> I love it. I love Instagram. I think it's such, it's like the most fun way to market your business is creating these short form videos. I love it. That's awesome. Cool. You're just the boss babe of all things here. So we love that. <laughs> oh, thank you. So are you, Queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Any other crazy things that's happened that would take the cake that you've experienced in your career? I mean, I... The, the, the rocker, the, the heavy metal couple is, is yeah. always the couple I think of. Cause that yeah. I was just like so floored. I think the, if I were to share one other story, it would be that one thing that I find that's really funny is a lot of couples that come in that are like, we are horrible dancers. Like you're going to have your work cut out for you. Like, are you ready for this? Those people tend to be way better than they thought. Like so good. And then the flip side of it is I had this lovely couple, so sweet. They wanted to do a mashup. So they had picked like six songs. Like it was very complex. They come in and I swear to you, they could not even do like a step tap. Like they didn't know right from left. They didn't know anything. And I was just like, this is so funny. It's like the people who are like, I like, we're so bad. And I'm like, you're amazing. And then this couple that brought in the most complex thing and they're just like, we, we don't know how to do anything. And I'm like, so I, I thought that was hysterical and I, was- I made it work for them. I mean, they, by, by the time I was done with them, they looked amazing. They were rocking it, but my gosh, that was a struggle. That's cool. Have you ever had like a full bridal party come in to learn a dance? Yes. yes. Cause I totally done that. bridal party yeah. choreography and that is so much fun, like so much fun. And I am, I'm, I'm actually thinking right now about adding like a fun, like bachelorette party idea where people could come to our studio and we could teach them like a, a like a sexy chair dance or something That'd be cool. Um, or like a burlesque thing. I think that could be really fun, but yeah, we, oh my gosh, you're reminding me. I did a, a groomsmen dance once where they Ooh. were all wearing cowboy hats and it was Ooh, like so this. awesome. <laughs> they did the whole like cowboy hat line dance and it was epic it was so epic i that was incredible so yes we do we do wedding parties and okay all the ideas are flowing back into my brain i knew you Um, you had some more back in there (laughs) yeah i gotta dust them off i gotta dust them off um oh my gosh so there was a groom that um so do you know the song you can leave your hat on yes yeah oh yeah you can leave your hat on it's like very sexy Yes. So he wanted to surprise his bride with this like sexy dance for her. Oh. And so I worked with him and we had like a chair where she would be sitting and I okay. choreographed this whole dance for him where he was dancing to you can leave your hat on. And he was like taking his jacket off. And I mean, we kept it. It was still PG. Believe me, you know, it would still be okay for grandma to see. Exactly. But I thought it was so sweet because he just wanted to surprise her and do this fun dance. So that was, that was pretty fun. So do they ever, do your clients ever send you a video or a clip so that way you can see it? Or do you ever really get to see the results? I, like, I, it. I wish it happened more often, you know, like I a mean, lot of times they're like, we're going to do it. And we have automated that system now. So that's great. Like we have an auto, um, like follow up with them and, you know, send us your videos for social and all that. So we see a, a decent amount of our clients. Like if you go to our Instagram or our TikTok, right. you'll see like, there's yeah. a lot of videos on there from people's wedding days. And when those come in, it is like, so thrilling and then of course my instructors they want to see like they want to see the final result like that's so so that's what I would want to see I mean it's the fun planning but I want to see okay I want to make sure I did my job and everything you know 
So yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. It is important. We, we always ask for those videos. So when we get them, we get very excited. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, cool. Well, tell everybody where they can find you, your website, Instagram, TikTok, all those good things. Awesome. So if you want to learn more about Wedding Dance Coach and our private uh, customized first dance lessons, you can go to our website, which is myweddingdancecoach.com. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Wedding Dance Coach. You can totally send us a DM with the word checklist. We have a free first dance checklist, which is killer. It is awesome. It goes through okay. every everything that you need to know to plan your perfect first dance in terms of when you should start your lessons, what sh should you bring to your lessons, day of tips that most people forget. So it's a really awesome guide. So you can DM us the word checklist on Instagram and we will send that to you. And if you are wanting to grow your business or brand on Instagram, you can go to my website, Elizabeth Marbury, M-A-R-B-E-R-R-Y.com. And you can find all about the podcast and all that. And you can also find me on Instagram at Elizabeth Marbury. And I would love to support you in growing your biz on Instagram. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on to this Takes the Cake, Elizabeth. And it was super awesome to learn all these fun things. And um, we're excited. So. Thank you so much for having me. It was so fun chatting with you. And we're, I can't wait to dance, dance out of this podcast with you. I love it. 